You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. LSU, uh, the elite camps are going on this week. So it's when all the prospects come to campus and the coaching staff has a chance to scout a lot of these guys. And some really big name prospects are coming to LSU. Uh, last week, we talked with Billy Embody about this. He had a bunch of linemen on camp. Have a lot of the skilled guys, specialists as well, uh, coming this week. Uh, Jaden Rashada, quarterback out of California, recently took an official to, to Baton Rouge. Uh, Five-star quarterback Dante Moore out of Detroit. He visited LSU in late April. Uh, LSU's current list is the favorite to land uh, Dante Moore, and Rashada is going to make his announcement in four days uh, on the 18th. Um, Moore, for what it's worth, is the number 12 overall prospect and the number four quarterback on the 247 composite. So take that for what, for what it's worth. Um, got a really good relationship with Brian Kelly and the staff. He's also visiting Texas A&M this weekend. Uh He's got Michigan and Oregon on the list. So LSU is still looking to land a quarterback in the 2023 class. I, start, I started thinking about this because I was asked, I, I've been asked a lot. I, this isn't a new conversation, but I was just thinking about it today a little, a little deeper. Because look, Arch Manning isn't going to LSU, and we all know that. And Eli Holstein has already committed to Alabama. Now he was at A&M and flipped, and now he's committed to Alabama. And it looks like that'll stick. But... um. LSU is looking for a quarterback in this class, and I've long said that you've got to sign a quarterback in every class, and I've long believed that, that you can't skip a cycle because somewhere along the way, that gap, you're going to pay for it unless if you end up with someone who solidifies himself as a three-year starter so it allows the cycles to catch back up. Um, one example that we used for a lot of years was A.J. McCarron at Alabama because he was a three-year starter you looked at all the quarterbacks. Go back and look at all the quarterbacks they missed on over that cycle. But it just didn't matter because he held it down for three years. And then they got the transfer Coker from Florida State and won a national championship and sort of picked back up after that. But, you know, it used to be that you couldn't miss a cycle. You know, at LSU, one of the examples always was what happened with Ryan Perilou. You know, LSU signed Ryan Perilou in Les Miles' first class. He was the all-everything quarterback out of East St. John. And they signed Ryan Perilou in 2005. Well, in 2006, they didn't sign a quarterback. So you have Perilou there in 06, and then he backs up Matt Flynn in 07. Of course, started the SEC championship game when Flynn was injured. And in 08 was supposed to be Perilou's year. He gets booted off the team. And because you didn't sign a quarterback in 06, you were left with Jarrett Lee as a redshirt freshman and Andrew Hatch. And we know how that went. Hatch was the... Transfer from Harvard, didn't go so hot. He got concussed. You replace him with Lee, and Lee was just not ready. I mean, he made some really nice plays, but the pick sixes became the story of that 2008 season. It's a great question. Like the Ryan Perilou conundrum, the what if. What if Perilou had stayed? What if you didn't have to play Lee as a redshirt freshman? And in many ways, that sort of defined the rest of the Les Miles era, where he just said, we're never going to beat ourselves again. We'll play defense and run the football and protect the ball, and that will be our formula to win. And that's what LSU was defined by for basically the next decade. But that all really changed, y'all, in, in 2008. I'm sorry, in 2018. Because in 2018, LSU missed on James Foster. It was a quarterback out of Alabama that they were recruiting. It went right down to the wire. He ends up picking Texas A&M. And LSU did not sign a quarterback in 2018. Again, you can't go a cycle without bringing in a quarterback anymore. So what did LSU do? They had to go to the transfer portal. And they landed Joe Burrow. And we all know what happened. Joe Burrow became a two-year starter. You won a Fiesta Bowl, and then you had the greatest season in the history of college football, won the national championship. And Joe Burrow is, is now the greatest football player to ever play at LSU. He has, in my opinion, uh, taken that mantle from the late, great Dr. Billy Cannon as the greatest player ever at LSU. And that was really the, the lesson in that moment that we all collectively at LSU learned, is that you don't have to sign a high school quarterback every year. Would it be nice? Absolutely. 
you'd love to get great five-star talent after five-star talent, but you can win with transfers. Uh, look at the SEC this year. I mean, we've gone through this list a ton, but I mean, Tennessee's going to start Hendon Hooker. He's a transfer. South Carolina's going to start Spencer Rattler. He's a transfer. Texas A&M's going to start Max Johnson. He's a transfer. Ole Miss is likely going to start Jackson Dart, the USC transfer. You know, Will Levis at Kentucky is a transfer. Jaden Daniels at LSU is a transfer. Zach Calzada left A&M for Auburn. TJ Finley's at Auburn as well. Transfer, transfer. There are signees that do very Look, Bryce Young. Bryce Young was a five-star signee at Alabama. He won a Heisman in National Championship. It works. That model absolutely works. Forgive me, he won a Heisman. He did not win the National Championship last year. K.J. Jefferson. He's probably going to win the Heisman this year, right? According to everybody, Josh Bertaccini. Uh, Anthony Richardson in Florida, if he wins the job. Will Rogers at Mississippi State. Miles Brennan. I mean, there are examples of guys who are signees that win the job. And stay and have success, and that's fine and good and great. But it's also been proven that you don't have to go that route. Sure, for every Trevor Lawrence in this modern age of college football, there's a Joe Burrow. I mean, Stetson Bennett, of course, won the national championship with Georgia last year. We know how what his path was, but JT Daniels was that guy uh, until he was injured. So I would say that while you still have to add a quarterback, you don't have to add a high school signee because with the proliferation of the transfer portal and quarterbacks leaving where they are, you don't just necessarily get former Power 5 signees. You get guys with experience. I mean, Jaden Daniels is LSU's most experienced quarterback. This guy started 30 games in his time at Arizona State. Spencer Rattler at South Carolina, I mean, the guy was a two-year starter at Oklahoma. Was on everybody's big board. Mock draft as a top five pick. Didn't go great for him last year. Lost his job. Now he goes to South Carolina. But that's a dude that's played a ton of football. That's a better option this year for South Carolina than any freshman they could sign. So I guess I look at Brian Kelly's class and and maybe, of course, we'd love to have seen Arch Manning land at LSU or a local guy like Eli Holstein from Zachary who's now going to, to Bama or whatever way it, you know, it may go. Listen, Ricky Collins is at... Woodlawn, who's a great, great talent. He's committed to Purdue currently, and maybe LSU gets him, or maybe they land Jaden Rashada, or maybe they land Dante Moore. I don't know. You'll know I'm not the recruiting guy. I'm not here to give you any insight or you know, breaking news info on any of these guys. All I'm saying is if you get one of those guys, awesome. I'm not saying, man, this isn't important. Of course it is. Recruit great young quarterbacks. Develop them. That's phenomenal. But there are multiple ways you can win now, and it's been proven. So you can hit that transfer portal even if you don't sign a quarterback and still supplement your roster. It's just different than what it used to be 10 years ago or even five years ago. So uh, we'll wait and see if Brian Kelly's able to get a high school signing, a quarterback signing, into this 2023 class. But if he doesn't, there really shouldn't be any anxiety because you're going to be able to hit the transfer portal and LSU will always be a really attractive spot, landing spot for any transfer at any position, namely quarterback. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.